These are molds made of silicone. I can pour resin into them to create copies of whatever the original master part was. In this case, I'm copying little 3D printed spaceships for my tabletop game. The goal with mold making is to retain as much of the original detail as possible while avoiding things like these giant air bubbles. Eliminating these pockets of air once and for all is where the injection molder comes in. Instead of pouring liquid resin and just hoping it cures without air bubbles, here I'm going to be injecting melted plastic into the mold, applying pressure that'll force out any unwanted air. Now, because of this added pressure, typically with injection molding, you're going to use an aluminum mold. Unsurprisingly, the flexible rubber molds I already had produced a subpar result. They flexed too much during injection and the plastic didn't fill out all the corners of the mold. So I just drop back in the failed cast and try something else. Before I go and pay for custom aluminum milled molds, I want to take a couple days to just experiment with dumb stuff and try out materials I already have laying around. The silicone mold had promise in that the material itself didn't melt, but a lot of pressure is required to get all the corners filled, all the air bubbles out, and that's just not something that's ever going to work with a flexible material. So since the flexibility is the main issue here and temperature didn't really come into play, I'm going to try some rigid resin next. This one is going to be a two-part mold, top and bottom. I added some brass BBs as alignment marks for the two halves so they'll always slot together in the same spot. Then I just spray the part with mold release so that I can pour the resin over top it. I like to use eyedroppers for small batches of resin because it's really hard to get the ratios exactly right. In theory, if this mold works how I'm expecting it to, it should function better for injection molding than the flexible silicone did. But there's a lot that could go wrong here. It's possible that the melted plastic from the injection molder won't release from the two-part mold and the whole thing will get stuck together. This resin also isn't rated for particularly high temperatures, so it's possible the whole thing will just melt when brought up to the high temperatures of the injection molding setup. To my surprise, neither of those two things went wrong, but I had two other things go wrong. Since I was using a two-part mold, I had a lot of plastic leaking around the edges. The entire part had terrible surface quality too because I used a resin that was about two years expired, but for a proof of concept, it had some promise. So with the rigidity issue being figured out and surface quality being my new main issue, I'm going to try epoxy next. In theory, using epoxy for the mold will fix basically all the problems I had with the previous two attempts. I'm making the mold by pressing the master model into the material, which basically guarantees good surface finish and no air bubbles. It's also easier to work with this material in general. It cures harder and faster so I can add registration marks, the input hole, air vents, and since it's more rigid than even the resin was, I should be able to clamp it together harder to prevent any leaks from out the sides. To ensure a really solid join and that I can clamp the mold together very tightly, I'm going to fix the actual epoxy molds inside of a wooden frame. I'm really hoping to see some solid injections on this one, so I'm doing a lot to clean up the intake hole and also adding an exit hole for the air to guarantee that I'm not going to see any of those air bubbles. Those additions on top of the more secure clamping with this new wood jig should hopefully give us some somewhat decent productions. I then finished off the homemade mold by filling in the gaps with more epoxy to really get this thing solid, cleaned up the intake hole one more time, and with that it was time to take it out for a test.
saw no plastic came out of the vent, so I was worried I didn't extrude it all the way, but this one's perfect. I've cranked out four of these already. There's another one ready to be demolded. I'm getting ready to do the sixth. It's so fast. Once I've got like a perfect mold, this is gonna be unbeatable. I don't have to wait for any resin to cure or anything. I can just bang, 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 pull out the next one. I only have to wait like 10 seconds. All of the imperfections I'm seeing in these so far is just down to my mold not being perfect, but the material itself is holding up really well. It's just that I didn't uh, fill in all the cracks perfectly and I was a little rough around the edges with my venting and uh, input. I'm also still kind of working out some of the slag from the barrel from when I was messing around with different plastics earlier. I have noticed some tiny ripples on some of these, which I think comes from me demolding it a little too early. I'm getting impatient with it, but learning something with each cast. Even if these models aren't perfect yet for like a two day dive into mold making with only stuff I had laying around, this is a huge success. Not a single one of these flying saucers had any air bubbles in them at all, which was a huge predicament for this specific model with uh, resin casting. This is big, this is big, I'm excited. Even the difference in results from the first test with silicone to the current attempt with epoxy are dramatic. I've only been messing around for two or three days with stuff I already have and it's shown a lot of promise. In terms of surface quality and detail so far, my DIY injection molding setup hasn't quite caught up to the more basic resin pouring into silicone molds, but in terms of reliability with the air bubbles, affordability of materials at a high scale, and even speed at a high scale, it's gonna be unbeatable. When when I'm making hundreds of these little miniatures for the production of the board game, I don't have time to wait on, you know, 90 minute cure times for resin and then half of them are thrown away due to air bubbles. It's a lot of experimentation and struggles in the short term that'll make this whole thing more scalable in the future. There's still a lot of things I can do to improve this home studio injection molding setup. Right now, the biggest issue I'm running into is the little ripples on the surface of these miniatures. I was sourcing my material by chopping up five gallon buckets, which is high density polyethylene, which is used in a lot of bigger stuff like buckets and cartons, but not usually on smaller things like this. I found out that's because as it cools down, it shrinks a little bit, which is the cause of all the imperfections I'm getting right now. So I think I can even get some even better results out of this exact same mold by just switching up the plastic I'm using. For the moment, until I finish the big studio move, this is where I'm leaving the project with the spaceship miniatures, but you'll hear a lot more about it in the coming weeks and months. This is why I'm in a creepy basement, by the way. I'm storing things here for the move. I don't just hang out and actually I totally do just hang out in basements. So what am I talking about? The water heater is kicking on and making weird noises, so that's probably my cue to stop talking. So, uh, I'll see you on Thursday with the stream and Tuesday for another upload. Thank you for your time.